Welcome to About Town, a program about the 169 towns in the state of Connecticut. And as we speak, there still are 169 towns. And I'm here today with Joe Lametta, presently the, and for a long time, the Director of Public Works of the town of Weston. And welcome, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Always a pleasure. Oh, yeah. Joe, you, you, first of all, I, the thing I remember most about you was when I started doing watercolor in, it might have been the early 80s, or whatever it was, and I, the assignment was to do a portrait of somebody, not yourself. And I asked you, can I, can I take a photograph and do a picture of you? And I did a watercolor gentleman. I, damn good, I must say. It was good. Yeah. You were, seat, you, you were seated or standing, whatever, in front of the wall of all the pictures of all the first selectmen. I, and I still have that uh, picture, by the way, the original picture that you took to do your watercolor from. Yeah. And it was beautiful. Thank you very much. Yes. Appreciate that. Nice. So anyway, so that was, that was my first meeting with you. That was many years ago. Yes. Those were the days, I think, when... Um, the dog pound was at the dump. Excuse me, at the. Uh, the, the excuse dog me, at pound the, was at the. Uh, public works. At the p- town garage, yes, it was. And it at got the, moved to the transfer station. That's right. And the town garage was not really there, I don't think. The town garage, what we know of today, was not there. Yeah. Um, it was an old pole barn. Yeah. Uh, remnants are still there in the building, but, um, you know, we rebuilt that in uh, 97. Right, I know. Now, the. The, the old pole barn, you know, you think about it, there was lots more snow, it seems to me, then, too. It seemed like it. You know, the, the winters were different. Um, since I've been there, it seemed like all the winters are bad. <laughs> <laughs> and we've, we've had some bad ones. And, you know, as you do this job, uh, things change and you do more book work and, and record keeping. So, you know, I would keep track of the number of storms every year. And... You know, we've, there's not the eight storms you get anymore. I mean, we're doing 12, 15 storms, sometimes 17, sometimes 24 events. That's and very interesting. It, and it seems like it's been like that for, for years. Even though the types of storms are different, mm-hmm. maybe not as cold, but the winters are bad. We have a very active tree warden who we works with you, yep. right? Yeah, I, I actually was the tree warden up until a couple of years ago. Yeah, that's, oh yes, that's right. Um, yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there was a little bit of controversy there, but, um, you know, I, I enjoy doing it, and we have a new one now. Mm-hmm. We do. And he works, doesn't he work with the power company or something? He, he works with, with Eversource closely. I mean, you, you have to. So we've been lucky in, in that respect because uh, Eversource has taken a lot of trees down um, that are near the power lines, and they do that, you know, gratis to the mm-hmm. town. So yes, yeah, because I'm not trying to jinx us in any way. No, <laughs> we don't. We don't need any more storms like that. It's uh, although I thought for my la- my, my real last hurrah, we were going to get maybe that hurricane, and you mm-hmm. know, I'd have to stay here for a couple months cleaning <laughs> up, overseeing things. But no, we were lucky enough. The 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 past winter was my last hurrah. I, f- I found, uh, when, I f- when I first f- heard of moving to Weston, you know, when I, we were going to do this, I asked someone and, and he said, well, they've got great roads. Because he had to get down for his business in Westport and like that, you know, <laughs> and at your farewell party. That was uh, great. Party. Everyone loved that. <laughs> but it's true, the... Um, and I didn't want to repeat what the woman previously had said, but when you do, when you cross the Westport line to go to Weston or the Norwalk or whatever, uh, the roads are whew, yeah. clean. We, we hear that a lot from a lot of people. And, you know, of course, snow removal, we take a lot of pride in that. Not only me, but the guys that work for me do a tremendous job. It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of hard work. Um, I don't know if you have ever been in a snow plow but when it's snowing, coming down, it's, it's personally, I don't do it, mm-hmm. but I've been in the trucks and it's, it's intense. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes you can't even see the road. And of course, then you got to deal with joggers or cross country skiers or the, the stray dog. And it's amazing that we haven't had more incidents mm-hmm. over the years with, with stuff like that. But, um, you know, we, 
we we take a lot of pride in what we do, and mm -hmm. that, that's not me. It's it's those guys up there. I, I know, and and you said something at your uh, party at the end about really the guys are the ones who are doing this, and and that's it true. Is. It is. It, it is true. You know, I can direct, I can lay out a little bit of work, but they're they're out there every day. You know, the public sees them, and um, as I said, you know do this job like you live here, you know, like it's your town, and, and they do. Mm -hmm. And that, I think that'll continue. Yeah. Well, then very important now is this uh, municipal uh, stormwater business. Yep, yep. Um, we're just just getting started on that, so I haven't been too involved in that. But, you know, the state, I think uh, a lot of the smaller towns we're upset about yes. that because you know it's it, it's going to cost the town a little bit more money mm -hmm. in their budget, and the state is mandating certain things, um, such as you have to sweep all the roads in town mm -hmm. at least once every year. Well, town roads or private ta roads? town roads. Yes. Well, you know, guess what? We're ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. I've been doing that for years mm -hmm. because I like a neat road. Mm -hmm. I like a neat town. I like it to look neat. And, uh, you know, you have to earmark certain catch basins and mm -hmm. get them cleaned a certain amount of time. So, you know, the, you need manpower and money to do this stuff mm -hmm. and to implement the MS4 program. Mm -hmm. So um, the town has put a little bit of money aside. They really, really came on great guns in the beginning. Mm -hmm. they, in 2015, they, I remember, yeah, was the first public hearing. They, and they wanted a lot more where it actually would have cost the town probably a quarter of a million dollars to implement this program. Mm -hmm. So they downgraded a little bit to keep everyone happy. And, um, you know, the state state needs it's, to... It's a federal, it's a federal It, it, it comes down to federal the to the yeah. state, yes, it is. So, uh, you know, it's bureaucracy, right? Is that what we call it? Well, yeah. in this case, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to always see the bright side. Well, Weston is subject to this because whatever comes flowing down and into the Long Island Sound. You know, yep. we, we have to keep it clean and yep. kind of thing. So justify our environmental. And I think, uh, you know, I've always been a real stickler with that in Weston. I mean, I've never used any herbicides, any pesticides on the road. Um, you know, the we, we finally eliminated putting all the sand out on the roads. Um, I use an eco-friendly um, melting agent now mm -hmm. when we're out plowing. Very little of it. Um, so you know, we I've been do I think I've been doing in Weston Public Works in general and the town. The, the town fathers have been really smart about this. We've been doing it a long time. I think we've always been on the cutting edge. I like to think that we got probably the one of the top public works departments in the state. Well, I think so too. Now I also. A long time ago, when I was on planning and zoning in the early 80s, I came across the fact that there was actually a map of where all of our storm drains were, whatever they were. Anyway, the catch, you, you know what, do you remember ba that? The catch basin, yep. yep. And it, is that now on the, uh, have we put that on? And it, we're starting to. Yeah. Um, that's something that uh, land use is going to implement. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's a layer, pretty, that's what it is, a layer. Yeah, it's pretty involved, but, it, you know, I mean, this is what you got to do. You have to be become smart about this stuff and, mm -hmm. and locate it. That's part of the MS4 also, but there are, probably are about 3,000 catch basins or open head walls in town that need to be earmarked and located. So, um and years ago, uh, in a program, the state of Connecticut had a program where they mm -hmm. let college kids do part-time work. And I worked with uh, a bunch of young kids, and we went around with Charlie Putnam. I don't mm -hmm. know if you know that yes, name. Of you course, probably do. Exactly. Um, and we we actually that walked. That was the Aspatuck Land Trust director later in, in his That's career. correct. That's mm -hmm. correct. And we actually walked all the roads and, and plotted out all these basins and pipes and everything where they went. And I still have that. Uh, that's all on hard copy. It's in my office and it's, it's invaluable. And, uh, you know, everyone that comes in now will reference that to do the plotting, as you said, for those mm -hmm. basins. Yes, and I'm so. wondering, because based upon what I've seen, just, you know, I've been here long enough so that, 
I said, gee, I was on planning and zoning from 83 to 1990. And in that time, uh, there were X numbers of subdivisions, large subdivisions. I mean, these beautiful properties that every, no, everyone always yeah. thought they were really theirs, <laughs> but they, they weren't. Were, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they all got subdivided. And there were, those were the days when the subdivision regulations had just... Actually, I have to pat myself on the back. <clears throat> the subdivision regulations in the town of Weston were very strict, and they proposed, and they couldn't get through the PNZ. They had been proposed. And I came on to PNZ, as I mentioned, in 83. I'm a professional planner, mm -hmm. right? So yes. I, I know these things. So I said, you know what? Change all of those musts to may, all those shalls to, eh, you know, okay. Because the only people who come to these public hearings for subdivisions are the engineers. Yep who propose these things, and they think that that's a great idea to do it anyway. And it wor it's been working. Yep, it has. Um, and uh, you know what? The, uh, these subdivisions now, we, we got all, all of them in there. The ponds, the fire ponds. Yep, the fire okay. ponds. Of course, you know, the at first they wanted public works to take care of all these mm -hmm. fire ponds. So <clears> that put a lot more responsibility mm -hmm. on me. Mm -hmm. And there are there are quite a few of them around town. But speaking of subdivisions, we're I don't think we're we're kind of running out of room for subdivisions now. There's not too much property left in Weston. That's correct. And someone might say, "Gee, but what's all that open land?" Well, that's the Nature Conservancy. It's open and land. That's what the taxpayers wanted, right? Not only did we want it, but we we bought the development rights for the open space price during, it was one of yep. George Gadara's brainstorms. Yep. He, yeah, well, yeah. I think it was a good insight on his part. Oh, he, I think Weston should be so grateful to George Gadara. Yeah, yeah. And a uh, very creative lawyer. Yeah. Very creative, very smart man, and, a, mm -hmm. you know, he was a great boss to work for. And at, Didn't he once work at... at, at he did, uh, when he was a young man, mm -hmm. long time ago. Mm -hmm. Um... I hope George watches this also because actually he was instrumental really in uh, him and I in getting that public works department built up there. And yeah. he, he was a great help. You know, we needed a town meeting. And um, just for the record, that, that whole complex was built for about a million five hundred thousand, including yeah. the salt shed. Now, you can't build a house for that these days. So, mm. you know, if you look back at that, that, that was very, very smart. And that would... If that old building was up there today, we would never get that building because it would be probably upwards of five million, and that isn't going to happen now. Um, you know, the other thing you probably will remember that old building, the old pole barn, was dangerous. And no, I didn't know enough. I didn't know too much about that. Yeah, well, the that was an old building that was there when I got there. It was structures with other structures added on and it was all wood mm -hmm. um no fire protection you know no marked exit signs nothing and you know years ago people never thought of anything about that but when i came in and began to talk to george about it um you know we looked at it and said geez the town uh, town fathers and the selectmen and the board of finance are giving me all this beautiful equipment it's parked in this barn you know millions of dollars worth of equipment mm -hmm. but the barn is not safe so if a truck goes in there god forbid it has an electrical fire it catches there goes your equipment there goes everything you invested mm -hmm. and if it's in the middle of winter you're not going to get your snow your roads plowed mm -hmm. no one's going to get to where they're going mm -hmm. so you know that's, it's, yeah. Like, you, you know, you're right. We should have a safe building up there. Yeah. And we, we've discussed it. I always thought that you were the architect of it. I, I had a lot of, a big input in. It was uh, very lucky on that. Um, you know, they, they let me design different areas of it. Of course, there's an architect. You know, I can't mm -hmm. do that. And there was engineers. And it was just, it's a beautiful facility. Very yes. proud of it. And I keep it nice. It doesn't cost the taxpayers a lot of money because it's all block, you know, yeah. it's good structure. And yeah. 
Oh. Well, you know, it's interesting because that's where they hold the regional household hazardous waste day. And I, I would, I can't have I haven't asked people from other towns because they do come, but they must think, gee, wow, no wonder you know, Weston's supposed to be one of the richest towns. Look at this gorgeous building. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, when different guys from Public Works or we have, uh, you know, a regional meeting up there for mm -hmm. Public Works, everyone loves it. Mm -hmm. You know, they think it's a beautiful facility. A lot of places don't have a, a real nice facility like that. And, um, you know, and you got to think, too, that's right in the middle of a residential area, kind of. Mm -hmm. So we're mindful of all that. I got wonderful wonderful neighbors up there and, and friends and you know we always try to work with them mm -hmm. um and if you look at our transfer station also it's a gorgeous place yes that was the other i yes so, so you've got snow you have roads cleaning out the roads and and of course do you build do you, do you, they hire people to do it or do you the, the, the we roads? we haven't built a road in many years um because now as you talked about the subdivisions, when they come in, they build the road to town specifications, mm -hmm. and then the town takes it over. So the the function of the public works department now is strictly maintenance for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the paving, any any major major stuff, all gets subbed out. Mm -hmm. Great. But I oversee all that. And, yeah. uh, so in the uh, I I know the other thing that I've seen through the years is uh, you have X number of miles of road that you do yeah we have 80 yeah. we we when i first started we had probably 72 to 70 to 72 miles of road so we took over uh an additional 10 roads mm -hmm. and it's capped out at about 80 because as we talked about there are is not too much room mm -hmm. now of course the old property up here um um, in uh, Robson Strassler? No, uh, they were the club near the tennis club. Oh, uh, Singing Oaks? Singing Oaks. Mm -hmm. And then the one before the Singing Oaks uh, that they just just sold, the gentleman passed away. I just can't think of his name right now, but they're putting the road up in there, mm -hmm. and that may become a town road. So mm -hmm. it's been 10 years probably uh, oh, yes. since. Uh, uh, that would be. Uh, Western Woods. Yes. Mm hmm. Weston Woods, uh, the old writer up there who mm -hmm. recently passed away, but that was bought by somebody. Mort Shindell. Mort, yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Tough, Took me a while. To tough <laughs> thinking of all these uh, these things, these names, but yeah, that that may be you know eventually be a town road. I think he's building it, so that will be one uh, to be mm -hmm. taken over. So we might get an additional mile there, mm -hmm. and of course it's more pressure on public works. Mm -hmm. Well, I know the when I was on P and Z, we I was mentioning the subdivision regulations. One of the things that we did ultimately was we said you cannot have any more dead end roads longer than fifteen hundred feet. And however, the lawyers always interpret this, but n nonetheless, that was something. And you have to put the road in first, the whole road. Right. Because one of the problems had been even though they had great environmental things that they developed and rules and everything else they forgot. And so they would approve a subdivision. And, of course, the first person who wanted to build something was the guy at the end. Right. And they, wouldn't, they couldn't make the road go in. That's right. It was a mess. So whether this would ever change or not, I don't know. But, yeah. but it's... And they, they, that's right. And they do pave the road. They put mm -hmm. the bottom course on. And then when everything's done, they put the top course on. We inspect it and accept the road, and the selectmen have the final say on that. Yeah. And, of course, you know, there's a lot of old roads in Weston mm -hmm. that no one really knows how they were accepted or if they should have been accepted. It's just kind of, you know, geez, the public works maintain it, so it must be a town road. <laughs> right. Well, the, well, I guess maybe if it's named after someone who was an original settler. <laughs> That's right. Something like we that. We figure that it's old enough to be a town road. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'd like to say also thank you to you for your support um, over the years. And, you know, we always enjoyed seeing you up at Hazardous Waste Day. You talked about that. Yeah. But, um, you know, that's a great thing, too. We had tons of cars all the time. Everyone's doing their thing to get the chemicals out of the yeah. waste stream. So... Yeah. Um, well, this is this is where this is where I'm hoping that the new generation of people moving to Weston 
or smart enough, they already know that, you know, that yeah. they should do these things. Yeah, well, I don't know. That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we all have to have programs like this to remind people yeah. that if you like Weston and you just want to tweak it here and tweak it there, the worst thing that could happen would be to have the DEP come down on you for because now that we're testing various and sundry things mm -hmm. for the uh, MS, whatever it is, yep. say, oh my goodness, look at this, is this here? You better put in sewers. Or blah, 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 you know, kind of thing. Yep. So. Um, the, the, the sewers and, and the, you know, the public water, it's going to be debated forever. Mm -hmm. Is it good for the town? Is it not good for the town? I think the town has lost its opportunity to put sewers in. You're never going to see it because that, Sewage has to be sent down mm -hmm. to another town. Mm -hmm. They have to be able to accept that. Mm -hmm. And I think Westport might have been open to that years ago because they mm -hmm. probably are the closest town that has a sewage treatment plant. Mm -hmm. They were probably open to that years ago, but I don't think you'll ever see that again. No, I, I recall that uh, when George, we had the issue of should we enlarge the schools? And George was first electman then. And I think he realized that if you're going to build something this big, you're going to have to have mm -hmm. infrastructure. Yep. And as it turns out, we got lucky. And uh, the legislature, in its wisdom, and I won't mention who was said, you can put in a tertiary treatment plant. Yes. The old treatment plant, yeah. Well, that, that's the drawback to no sewers. You know, you mm -hmm. you got to have facilities, smaller facilities within the town to take care of it. And they need to be maintained. They need people to maintain it. Mm -hmm. You know, you. I mean, we all have septic tanks in our homes, and mm -hmm. they need to be maintained and cleaned every mm -hmm. couple of years to function. Maybe a lot of people don't do that. Who knows? But if you have a, a, a system that's compromised, you know, that gets into the waste, into the water stream, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, there's six of one and a half dozen of the other. I, I don't think the town has to worry about sewers these days. Now, there is public water on the outskirts someplace mm -hmm. up near Westport. And, uh, up near I, I don't, Georgetown. Yeah, in, mm -hmm. in Georgetown, right, because of the nursing facility. Mm -hmm. I don't see any problem with that. You know, I don't, I don't think that's going to affect zoning at all, do you? Well, the thing that I always say is that and it was from the water study I learned these things. The town of Weston was way ahead of its time with the Dominsky Oak Rock study, mm -hmm. which you, I wasn't here then. It was in the 70s, 76. Yep. yep. Uh, but we did a, a water study, which was published in 93, although we started it in the 80s. And um, what we discovered was... There's a water cycle, but I learned it. Yeah, the water, it comes down, and then it goes into the ground, and then it, you know, some of it just, just evaporates and blah, blah, blah. But you have to keep that water cycle going. And the problem with um, putting in public water is that it doesn't get back into the soil. Because either the water, you use it, or, yeah. to, or else you, it, it, it upsets the water cycle. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. But on the other hand, if you if you keep the low densities that we have, relatively speaking, low density, uh, and no, nothing is ever going to happen unless you put a really bad chemical into the ground. You know the water. You got to remember we have two beautiful rivers running through town, right? Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. I mean, they're they're stocked, and and you're right. You want to keep that cycle going mm -hmm. with the water so even even for public water i mean that it, it's costly i don't think you'll ever see that either in with two acre zone and everyone has a well mm -hmm. um personally i love artesian well water i think it's the best drinking water you can get yeah. that, but that's why we got to keep our city and towns and yeah and that's where clean. the you dpw comes in because with all the rain that we're getting it's going to cause runoff yep. and all that kind of stuff. Yep. So that's Basin's why. Basin's got to be kept clean. Every, yeah. Yep, exactly. And I was just reading about this because partly to prepare for our interview. But if you've got, it used to be 10%, now it's 12% max 
below that 12%, 0 to 12% impervious surface coverage, you really basically don't have a problem because the, the natural... Yeah, right. But once it starts getting up there, you have to start doing things that are not natural. And the only place that we have serious uh, percentage of impervious surface coverage, surprise, surprise, is in the center of town where we have everything. Of course. So that's where probably the uh, MS4 stuff is. Yeah, a lot of it will be centered on there. But it's, you know, it's individuals also. Um, you know, years ago we wanted people to um, put their gutters into a catch basin. Mm -hmm. They're gutters now, so that's just rainwater. Mm -hmm. um, that can't happen now. You can't do that anymore. Um, so... You know they're they're going to be looking at this stuff. That's interesting. Why why did they change that? Because it would be mixing clear. Yeah, cleanly. because um, you know who knows what what else might be in there. I mean, you, you, they might say they're gutters, but it it could be you know running runoff from a sewer. Or mm -hmm. A sewer could be leaching, you know, breached and, mm -hmm. and leaching into the water stream. So. I think they're going to try and stop that too. So it's it's a big undertaking. This MS4 is pretty big. It's a lot of work for planning. It's a lot of work for the land use people. It's a lot of work for public works. It's a lot of work for the town engineer. Um, and, and, and the guys are going to who are still there. They're going to have to go out and do this stuff. A lot of it they're going to have to do. Like I said, you know, a lot of it is uh, best practices also for winter maintenance. You know, where do you where do you bring the the material that you sweep up after winter and, uh, you know, where do you bring the debris from a hurricane and, and all that stuff. So um, it's it's a lot of planning. Yeah. So, you know what, I'm kind of lucky in that respect. I can, I'm leaving at a good time because it would have been a whole heck of a lot of work for me, I'll tell you that. And so. Yeah, but the trick is that you have that original map. All they've got to do is put it there. And I hadn't even realized, it hadn't occurred to me there were only that you were only the second. Second public works director in about 60 years, yep. My predecessor, Dave Coley, was a wonderful man, and uh, thank him for getting me up here, and it's been a great 40 years, and I would just like to say thank you to the select men and women that I work for, the Board of Finance, um, the Board of Selectmen, uh, everybody has just been great to me, mm -hmm. I'll tell you. And it's kind of a bittersweet thing, Mm -hmm. Then I'm leaving. Um, don't know what's going to happen next. You know, it's a little scary, you might say. I mean, you come someplace every day of your life. You know, I'm here more than I'm probably with my family. So um, I'm sure it'll work out, but it, it's bittersweet. Um, particularly sweet for me to have been thank able you. to interview thank you three doctor. times. Okay, this great. This is our third interview. Thank you, thank you. It was thank wonderful. You. I'd love to sit here and talk for about... Four hours, but... You could do that. Yeah, maybe we'll do another one, a post... <laughs> yeah, right. Was post, it post-retirement? Post. There you post, go. Post-post-retirement. Okay, and thank you for watching, and move to Weston. We've got great roads. we got great roads. Yeah.